Well, 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 looks like we're back. What's up, Filmstruck people? It's your boy, Carson. God, I gotta stop saying that. I gotta just start saying, hello, I'm Carson. Hey, it really doesn't matter. Anyway, good to see you again. Uh, we watched another movie this week. Did you happen to catch it? We watched Orson Welles' The Stranger. Very cool movie. Um, yeah, I picked this one really because uh, I love Orson Welles and I don't know enough of his films, to be quite honest. Uh, in high school, like many other uh, a young cinephile, you get your hands on the AFI 100 Greatest Movies of All Time list. And if you're like I was, you look at it and you recognize a lot of the titles and then the top one, I didn't recognize. I was like, how have I never heard of this number one movie, Citizen Kane, before? I was in 10th grade. Maybe you're earlier. It doesn't matter. Either way, um, yeah, I fell in love with, with Orson Welles by, by studying Citizen Kane when I was younger. So there was a time when uh, in the course of like three days, I think I watched it three times. Yeah, because I, I watched, I, I had the DVD and I watched the movie and then I watched it with the Roger Ebert commentary and then I watched it again. And to kind of help myself understand what, what really makes it great. And uh, so I, from, from that time and just from, you know, I've seen the movie numerous times since then. And besides that, I think I've only seen Touch of Evil and uh, may maybe one, oh, I saw Other Side of the Wind, his, the recent Netflix release where they finished his final film. But uh, besides that, I was pretty uneducated in uh, the film work of Orson Welles. And so I, I wanted to find something that more people could watch and luckily this one was on Netflix. So I picked The Stranger. And it is a uh, classic film noir um, where we have our detective, an uh, incredible Edward G. Robinson. He's another one who, for some reason, I, I don't think I've seen a film of his. I might have seen some of Little Caesar on TCM one day, but besides that, I have not seen this man act. And it's a shame because I went to the acting school that he went to, and so there were always posters around with Edward G. Robinson's face on it. That gorgeous pug-like face of his, which, uh, this is funny, I was watching an interview after I watched the film, The Stranger. Um, I was watching an interview with Orson Welles, and he was talking about how he had initially wanted a woman to play the role that Edward G. Robinson plays as Mr. Wilson character. He wanted uh, Agnes Moorhead to play uh, the role because he thought it would be, and quote, uh, it would be uh, much, I'm not going to actually successfully quote this, but he, he said it would be more interesting to be kind of tracked down and exposed by this spinster lady instead of Eddie Robinson, as he referred to him. Um, he also said that uh, in the first week of shooting, uh, Edward G. Robinson had kind of a bad attitude, and he, and he was like, what's going on? And he was like, you keep shooting my bad side! Which, if, you've, if you know what Edward G. Robinson looks like, he's just so handsome. And so the idea that he would be self-conscious about his good and bad side, uh, Orson had to go talk to Loretta Young, who is the, the, uh, the female lead in, in the film, and they were shooting it that way so that they could shoot her good side, and she said, whatever, I don't care. Shoot, shoot Eddie however he wants to be shot. Uh, and so I just thought that that was interesting to know that there was this little, little bit of uh, battling behind the scenes going on. But uh, let's get down to it. The Stranger. It was so uh, kind of creepier than I anticipated. I knew what it was about. I knew that Orson Welles was playing this secret Nazi who was hiding out in Connecticut. And that this, this plot to, to expose him uh, is, is hatched by Edward G. Robinson when he... He uh, convinces the other people that he works with that they should lit out this known Nazi, uh, this guy, Meineke, uh, who is this killer guy. I, I don't know, I should look up the actor's name, but he has the most interesting face. And they show it quite a lot until he disappears, spoiler alert. But um, I, I kept noticing, I was like, this guy has such an interesting face. I just want to look at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, he, Meineke is, is set loose from his, his jail cell uh, with, the, uh, with the hopes that he will lead Edward G. Robinson and the rest of the security force, FBI, CIA, whatever they're supposed to be, uh, to find Franz Kindler, uh, who is actually Orson Welles in hiding. Um, but yeah, I, just, I, I knew that that was what we're going to be doing. We're going to be hunting this guy down. But knowing that World War II had ended just a couple years ago and the way that they kind of portray 
this boogeyman hiding in plain sight because uh, you you find out that he he's the guy who came up with the the concentration camp and this advanced genocide and so they really do paint a good picture of, of just how bad of a guy this is but when we see him he's Orson Welles and he talks well and he's a he's a teacher in the, in the town and he's fixing the clock and he how bad could this guy be uh, but man when that Meineke guy finds him for the first time and, and uses his German name and just like how that that conversation becomes so intimate so quickly and you watch as Orson Welles very very clearly chooses that he's he's gonna get rid of this guy and so as he's kind of talking to him you, you see him kind of looking around making sure that nobody's around and that he can actually get away with this and uh, so I mean there is cold-blooded murder that takes place in this movie and it's portrayed in an excellent fashion because it actually like hurts to to see um, which you know violence in film is not always that way. Sometimes it's a giddy, gleeful moment in a film, but they, they really nailed down that no, this is this is terrible. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the score is another thing worth noting. I, I watched it with my girlfriend, and there was a there was a point where she goes, "Ah, this is stressing me out," and I was like, "Yeah, that's that's a good score for you. If it's stressing you out in these moments, it's serving its purpose." Um, but yeah, there there were so many great. Uh, very reminiscent of only because I've only seen really Touch of Evil and Citizen Kane, but there were there were some camera tricks, of course, that I'm like that feels very Orson Welles when you catch a, a glimpse of someone in the mirror, or there's this great shot when Meineke at the beginning is getting his photo taken or something, and you you see his face in the reflection of the camera that is taking his picture as he talks to the man who's hidden in shadow, and I was just like, man, film noir is so fucking cool to look at. <laughs> They came up with such a great style for such a dark period of time to be making entertainment. They they managed to come up with a pretty cool uh, piece of genre film right there. Um, but yeah, let's see. I mean, uh, that clock tower was incredible. And it, it turns out they built it for the film um, and used in an excellent way uh, to get... If you haven't watched the movie, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to spoil a little bit of the ending here. But uh, when when we do kind of get Franz Kindler with his back in the corner and, and he there's no way for him to get out of this and he's having this this uh, showdown with his wife and with the detective who's after him and he's up in the clock tower um, there's this moment where they're kind of like instead of a cuckoo clock there are these statues of like a, a, de a demon and an angel chasing each other around and uh, so the angel has this sword of justice and of course Orson Welles is trying to escape and the angel comes around and fully impales him with the sword and, and him and the statue fall to their demise. But um, I, I read that uh, you weren't allowed to show that kind of graphic violence against a hero or a villain unless they were some kind of like Nazi sympathetic character. So I thought it was interesting that there, there was this like very violent death uh, for our, our villain. Um, and it was only made possible at the time through the censors because he was this Nazi. And so I think it's just so interesting that, it, that somewhere back in the day, the, uh, the motion, picture, wow. motion Picture Association of America blah, 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 had a rule like that. And uh, there's so many interesting rules like that. So if you, if you are watching older films, particularly from like the 30s and 40s and even the 50s, there's a lot of things that are happening um, that are only happening in, in ways to get around government censors. It's particularly interesting to watch uh, a lot of like Chinese films or uh, early Korean films. Uh, there's some pretty clever ways that they had to get around the censors, but I'm definitely uh, rambling on here. The Stranger was awesome. I'm really glad that we watched it this week. I hope you got a chance to watch it. Um, we're gonna keep on keeping on. So we got another film that we're gonna be putting out here uh, tomorrow. And uh, I don't know if you happen to catch that live stream that we did the other day with my buddy JT from Quarantine Film Club, but we did a top five of the favorite things we've gotten to watch so far in quarantine. That was a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to do another one of those. Um, we're going to be doing it on Monday, actually. Tomorrow. We're doing it tomorrow. We're doing a big 420 thing. So uh, yeah, if you're watching this video like in the future, yeah, 420 has come and passed, so uh, you missed the IG Live. But if you're watching this 
today. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. We're going to be doing that. Um, so yeah, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the film. Uh, if you want to talk some more about The Stranger, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. I will say over on at our, our Facebook group, uh, there's been quite a bit of discussion on there. I've seen some people that were already uh, talking quite a bit about it, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, hope you all are enjoying yourselves and watching great things and, uh, you know, keep on keeping on, people. I love you. Talk to you soon.